Mayor Frazier, will you please start the regular meeting? Thank you. Welcome to the June 22nd, 2021 regular meeting of the Council of the Township of North Dundas. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the townships on the Township of North Dundas's YouTube channel. Move by Councillor Hoy, seconded by Councillor Annable, that the meeting of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of North Dundas be hereby called to order at 6.48 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, at this point, if Council will indulge me, and I'm afraid they're going to have to, I'd like to uh, make a brief announcement and offer congratulations. Um, as many of us know, um, our, our, our Deputy Mayor, Alan Armstrong, was duly elected to represent SDG as the, as the new warden. Uh, Al, uh, Deputy Mayor will be the warden until the end of this term, the end of 2021. Um, I want to offer my sincere congratulations to uh, the deputy mayor. I know he will do uh, an amazing uh, a job representing us as members of North Dundas Council, us as uh, members of the township of North Dundas, residents, and he will represent all residents of SDG fairly and honestly. Uh, in that, I have complete confidence. The time that the deputy mayor has been a member of council as a, as a councillor for the township of North Dundas, he was a champion of all things important to the residents and the businesses of North Dundas. And uh, in his new role as warden of SDG, he will be the champion of all things important to the residents of SDG and the businesses of SDG. And in that, again, I have complete confidence. He will do uh, uh, an amazing job uh, we, we know now for many years, we know his honesty and his integrity is impeccable. And uh, I look forward to uh, having him sit as the warden of the Council of SDG. Congratulations to the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it uh, truly and deeply. And as I said, uh, after the election, I am I'm truly humbled and honored to have been given this opportunity and, and uh, I hope to live up to all your kind words. And, and uh, as everyone knows, this has been a difficult time for all of the municipalities. And uh, I look forward to being able to help right the ship that, that, that we're on at the counties and, and knowing the quality of people that are around that table. We have leaders from, from every section of this, uh, this great SDNG and they're strong leaders, each and every one of them in their own way. And, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it and, and humbled to be sitting at that chair even for, for a brief period of time. So thank you very much for your confidence. And, and thank you for that. And uh, again, uh, thank you for putting your, uh, your name into the hat. This is uh, uh, um, an, excellent, an excellent endeavor on your part. Um, before I start, we need to do a roll call. Mayor Tony Fraser, Deputy Mayor Alan Armstrong. Councilor here. Councillor Tyler Hoy. Present. Councillor John Thompson. Present. CAO Angela Rutley. Present. Director of Planning, Building and Enforcement, Calvin Pohl. Present. Deputy Clerk, Nancy Johnson. Present. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Clerk, Joanne McCaslin. Present. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, that Council approve the agenda as presented. Carried. Moved by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Hoy, that the minutes of the public meeting of the Council of the Township of North Dundas held June 9th, 2021 be adopted as presented. All those in favor. Carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that the minutes of the regular meeting, including the in-camera minutes of the Council of the Township of North Dundas held June 9th, 2021, be adopted as presented. All those in favor? Carried. Our... 
the president, our delegation isn't present yet. I think we will move right into uh, action requests, planning, building and enforcement, Calvin Pohl. Thank you, Mayor Fraser. So the first item we have uh, this evening is an action request to receive a zoning amendment application in the village of Chesterville. It's an application from uh, Dario uh, Lib Liberty. Uh, he's requested a rezoning from an institutional zone, uh, or excuse me, a commercial zone. He's formerly a uh, property owned by the Legion way back in the day and then was uh, taken over uh, for karate classes and that sort of thing, the Fizich, or Kizichu, I forget the name of it. Um, but they uh, wanted to take this building and remove it from the property and put in some townhomes on that property. So they're looking to rezone it to a residential second density uh, at the end of John Street. So the civic address is 49 John Street, and they're looking for uh, council's permission to move forward with a public meeting on that at the July uh, meeting of council, July 13th. Questions, comments from members of council? Uh, I'm gonna go right to Councillor Thompson. Yeah, it's a lot of history in that building. That was the, uh, I believe that was the first legion uh, in the village of Chesterville. And then it was uh, additions put on over the years. It, uh, but it served its purpose and it's, uh, it's now see the redevelopment of the property and uh, expand, the, uh, expand the housing. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Uh, further comments from uh, members of council? Um, I have a, I'm sorry, did I see a hand? I have a, yes, Deputy Mayor. I wish I had uh, your on mute cup with me, but I don't have that to show you, but you're, you are on mute. Well, it'd be good. It's, uh, I learned from the best. As I was saying quietly to myself in the room that uh, I was having a little computer trouble. It does seem to be doing some things all on its own, um, but that keeps it interesting. Um, yeah, I, th I to echo Councillor Thompson's uh, point. Um, it's it's good to see buildings that are have sort of run their use uh, in in their initial state being repurposed, and this is uh, certainly something that is needed. And uh, it doesn't mean that we forget history or or belittle the history, but it is time to move on, and, and it's a it's a great. Uh, it's a great step for the village of Chesterville. So it's, it's nice to see people interested and people investing money in the area. So I certainly agree with it. Yes, and, and uh, I echo the sentiments of uh, both the previous members of council. Uh, that, that building um, has served the community of Chesterville well. I, I grew up down the street from that building. I, I, I had many opportunities to be there uh, from uh, a young person attending uh, group meetings to uh, a young adult uh, attending uh, receptions and, and, uh, and other parties. Um, and, uh, and as Councillor Thompson would would attest to the deputy mayor's concern about history. If the walls could talk, there would be a story told. That's for sure. Uh, that uh, that building has uh, seen uh, many celebrations over the years, and I look forward to uh, the new the new the new building, the townhomes. Uh, it speaks well of. Uh, of people's desire to move to North Dundas, and it speaks well to business people's belief in uh, in success by investing in Chesterville. Any further comments? Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by <clears throat> second by Councillor Annabel, that Council hereby accepts the zoning amendment application from Dario La Liberté as complete and directs that the public meeting be held on July 13th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. At this time, I'd like to uh, welcome our MP, Mr. Eric Duncan. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Warden, and members of the council. Good to see you all. It's, uh, it's good to see you as well. So I will uh, ask, hello, Joanne. Uh, could uh, I get somebody to share the screen with my presentation? If you have that already, would that be possible to do? Wonderful. 
I'm having technical difficulties here from auto as we're finishing up our session. Uh, ha the house uh, rises tomorrow. So I'm back over at my, my place here in Ottawa, just as we're waiting for votes. Last night, we voted till about 1.30 in the morning. And tonight we're on till about midnight, 12.30. But it is the season. It's like the end of the school year. But um, I, I'll start anyway. And as the, uh, if the presentation can go up is, uh, is great. Um, this is part of my tour. Uh, the warden and the mayor have heard this presentation. A very similar one made at County Council, but uh, part of my job as Member of Parliament that I wanted to do was make sure at least once a year I'm getting around to our local municipalities just to speak about some of the issues that are on a federal lens that pertain to our local communities and so forth. And so um, uh, the County Council has got that briefing. The City of Cornwall got theirs a couple of weeks ago and uh, at which today with the news of uh, Cornwall Mayor, uh, former Mayor now, Bernadette Clément being named to the Senate. It, it might have been Count, it might have been the Warden Armstrong, but he took the new job yesterday, so the Prime Minister couldn't appoint him. So he's going to do the Warden job, I guess, for the year. So uh, there, I see it up there. Anyway, we'll go to uh, and I'll get into the second slide on topics to cover with uh, Council tonight. These are the six things. There's probably about sixty we could talk about in terms of issues and things that are happening in Ottawa these days. Um, but I want to cover uh, each of those uh, just to give you a bit of an idea. The first which I'll cover is our constituency office and services uh, that are happening. As you're likely aware, we have our main office uh, in Cornwall, just south of the roundabout on Brookdale Avenue that gets a lot of traffic. We've recently reopened that to walk in traffic. And I'm also happy that we have Sue Dingwall for my office back starting in our satellite offices. Um, Sue was back on Monday mornings at the township office there in Winchester uh, from 8.30 until noon. And we're just working with the municipality of South Dundas right now on those afternoon hours. We'll have a news release formally with that coming out hopefully very soon. But I will say anybody in North Dundas that's looking for service, please just call our office. We're trying to book them by appointment there in Winchester, but we're starting to see an uptick of uh, passports, uh, renewals, people starting to think about traveling again. And of course, uh, the usual uh, Canada pension plan, old age security, employment insurance, and so forth. The other thing I want to mention is a key contact. Most of you know Adrian, my executive assistant. And uh, Adrian is my eyes and ears as I, um, if I'm in Ottawa or uh, out on travels uh, around the riding, and he really manages the offices and the case files. If you have issues that come up, please don't hesitate to reach out to either Adrian or myself and we'll certainly give you a hand. Um, the next issue, uh, and I having been around that table with you, I know this is a common concern that is raised often, is the uh, problem or the continued challenge of cell and internet rates uh, in our region. I know that's probably a problem in every single part of the country. Um, and you're likely aware of the Wardens Caucus and the regional network that is doing work uh, to get a gig project up and going and get ourselves caught up and up to the standard that people are expecting today uh, with Zoom happening. But even I think after COVID, a lot of work from home arrangements, if not full-time, at least part-time or here or there, is certainly going to put the pressure even more on this. The one thing I've said, and I, I've spoken the House of Commons on this with a question recently, I was supposed to have another debate tonight on this, but unfortunately it got cancelled. Uh, but you'll see me pushing this in the next couple of weeks. Um, Red tape is no uh, stranger to any of us in trying to tackle that, but we have this project ready to go and the federal government is saying that they don't have a funding envelope to help fund that right now. It doesn't qualify through some of the regular broadband programs. So here we are, Eastern Ontario, ready to lead to get better gig service and uh, the gig project underway. And there's not even, they're fighting, not fighting, but they're discussing and, and trying to get uh, an envelope for funding on this. So um, I spoke to Burkett Foster about this numerous times about um, better service, not just for Storm, but for other internet service providers. And the government has a goal of getting, getting this gig standard level across Canada by the year 2029. I don't know about you, but if I went out to Carruthers Road or I was out on the Blaine Road in Mountain and I went and told people, don't worry, in the year 2029, you'll have better internet. I don't think that answer would go over very well. So not only do we have some of the red tape aspects, timelines continue to be a big issue. Not only do we have, you know, I, I think all parties agree that we need to dedicate money, but it's actually being able to deliver it in a timely manner that is a big, a big challenge for us. The next issue that I want to raise uh, is with Via Rail. Now, geographically in North Dundas, depending on what part of the municipality you're in, 
uh, what station you would normally use uh, would vary depending on it. Uh, having lived in South Mountain and Winchester for years, I used the Brockville station. Uh, but not only is it a, a, this issue with VIA a concern at the Cornwall station, but it is with Brockville, Smith Falls, and other, um, other stations along the 401 corridor. Via Rail is proposing a high frequency rail project. And to clarify, that's not high speed rail, it's high frequency rail. And what they're doing going from Quebec City to Montreal, up through Alexandria to Ottawa, and a new way of going down through Peterborough to Toronto. And the reason why they've selected that line is because they can have a sole dedicated line owned by Via where they're the priority. That's obviously good news. That's helpful for people along that line, but it leaves a lot of questions as now Cornwall, Brockville, Kingston, Coburg, and so forth is not on that high frequency line. What does it mean? Um, I've been working with Via Rail, Mayor Clément, and other folks around the Cornwall station on this, but I still think um, there's a lot of answers. Well, I think there's more questions than there are answers these days on this. What's it going to mean for the Cornwall station? What's it going to mean for the number of stops if transfers have to happen? And just making sure that while it's good news that there's a dedicated line going through Ottawa and Peterborough and so forth, we need to know exactly what that means for that southern part of, uh, of the counties and so forth on that. So uh, stay tuned for details on that. We will be speaking with our local municipalities asking for support. And the one thing that we're doing is, uh, and the reason I show this photo of the Cornwall station, um, if you've had the opportunity to take the train, even from Montreal to Toronto, all the stations are in very new shape. They've been renovated. And you look here in Cornwall, and I don't think it's been touched in a very long time. It certainly doesn't have that modern feel or that capital investment like many of the other stations have which raises a lot of concerns. So stay tuned on that issue. Uh, and the final one I'll say on that is just to with bus service um, in the industry being decimated across the country, particularly with COVID, but it was definitely difficult even before then to me passenger rail like VIA is even more important than ever before. So I'll continue to keep uh, our, our you know, area residents updated and trying to raise awareness and um, get some answers on what it means and doesn't mean for Cornwall. The next issue I would like to uh, to bring up to your attention, and I believe council, I know county council has offered their support and nearly, I think, a majority now of the local councils, which is much appreciated, is the three-digit national suicide hotline, 988. Um, what we're looking for is similar to 911, but for those that are in um, uh, situations where they need urgent mental health support, particularly around the issue of um, suicidal thoughts. Um, I don't need to tell you, I know you were all likely aware that um, suicides and mental health challenges in our area have been going up. COVID-19 has only made that and exacerbated that even worse. I write cards, and not to get too personal, I write cards um, every week uh, obitu for, or through obituaries of local residents to their families who have passed away to send a note of condolence. Last week, I wrote, uh, uh, there's four obituaries for young men all under the age of 35 that had taken their life. And um, one uh, tragically was a 16 year old child. And so um, we need to make sure that we have not only an easy to remember number for individuals or families that have somebody that needs immediate intervention. This also means the last bullet point I talk about, which is equally as important, we need more frontline support for mental health. Um, we don't need more studies. We don't need more action plans. We just need dollars delivered to local providers. So if somebody does need counseling, does need social work, does need addictions help, that they can get that in a timely and affordable manner. Uh, and I think that is something that's desperately lacking. And long-term care has got a lot of attention and rightfully so in COVID but I'm noticing an equal number of conversations and calls for action about mental health support. So that is something if uh, council has not supported, I've just lost track of who has, but it'd be wonderful to have North Dundas council support on this issue of the uh, three digit hotline that I think would be an important first step and tool into doing. The next issue is not new for me uh, around the council table, albeit virtually right now and in a different role, talking about affordable housing. Uh, and Calvin will be proud uh, that I keep using this word of diversified forms of housing. Um, we have a lot of single family dwellings, which is wonderful, but as our average age begins to increase as population in our region and in our country, and also we have more people moving to our region, which is a positive, we need to make sure that's reflected in uh, 
not only condo development, but uh, rental housing options and apartments as well for the um, segment of population who maybe have not achieved home ownership yet, or for people who are looking to downsize, retire, and maybe looking for something a little more turnkey. So uh, I'm fully aware that the majority of the jurisdiction belongs to you as a municipality into the province of Ontario. And I know the province is working really hard to tackle the issue of supply. Construction costs have come down a little bit from the high we saw in lumber, but it's still the demand aspect and the construction cost still continues to be increasing much higher than inflation. I want to talk about three things and ideas that we have and that I've been pitching here uh, in our policy lens in Ottawa of what we can do when it comes to the housing issue. Number one, the number of uh, non-resident foreign buyers is getting very high and frankly too high. I was just watching CTV Ottawa's six o'clock uh, six o'clock newscast and they were talking about the percentage of new mortgages in this country, one in five is coming from a foreign buyer. And a lot of times it's used for investment. They sit empty. And again, it's taking away supply that's needed. It's injecting uh, too much competition, I think, an unhealthy competition when it comes to people looking to get in, particularly as a first-time home buyer. So we need to take a look at a temporary freeze of non-resident foreign buyers until we get our supply issue figured out in this country. Another big thing is money laundering, particularly with real estate. People are using um, the real estate market in Canada uh, around the world for money laundering and proceeds of crime. It's very well known. If, you, um, if you're like me and you need something to help you sleep at night sometimes, watch TV or the Agenda with Steve Pakin. It is a very good program. I enjoy watching that quite a bit. And about a year ago was one of the best ones I'd seen. Um, the Agenda uh, program tackled money laundering and some things that we're not doing in Canada that we need to do in the seriousness of it. So this is something at a federal lens we need to crack down on. And I believe relatively we easily can do that better. The last thing is something we need to take a look around when it comes to purpose-built market rental housing. We don't have enough uh, 6, 8, 10, 12 unit apartment buildings. Um, I'm aware of the, the new one uh, recently, last couple of years in Winchester per se. There's been some smaller ones here or there. Uh, and I, I imagine there may have been the odd one coming through council for zoning um, since I've left the table. But we need to get better tax incentives. The issue is here, this is an example uh, of waiving the GST or HST when it comes to market rental housing, if it's four or six units or something along those size. The reason what's happening now is investors are telling me and they're telling my colleagues that they can turn around and for example, that building there that I just use as an example photo somewhere off of Google, uh, a developer can build that and they're choosing to sell that as condos because they can make the return on investment very fast. The idea of being in the rental business is a challenge, number one, being a landlord. But number two, particularly with the GST and HST, they don't get to pass that cost on to the, the condo buyer or that quick return on investment. They've got to add that to all of their financing costs and recoup that over a longer period of time. So again, it's the return on investment, the investor market when it comes to rental housing. We need to look at some serious tax incentives to revitalize that and get a jump going on that. The last thing I want to raise with Council tonight is infrastructure funding. I want to congratulate you guys on receiving money for the Hallville Park. I know that is not the last project you're looking for dollars for. There still are several others. Part of my job and my role is to make sure knowing what those priorities are and making sure we get our fair share back here. Um, Hallville Park could, could be an example. I haven't specifically know where you guys are at on the timelines for that. But the photo that I share here is at the Charlan Arena uh, of redoing their ice surface. And uh, we're familiar with that in North Dundas because both Winchester and Chesterville have been done in recent years. The biggest frustration I have is, again, I say the same thing with broadband and cell coverage. There is no shortage of money and promises of money being made. The big difference is being able to deliver on it and get these done in a timely manner. The, uh, the infrastructure projects getting announced and made public and work beginning in April, March, April, or May every year is a brutal timeline. You have completed your budget months ago. RFPs uh, and construction season is literally underway nearly imminently when these announcements are made and you're losing either a construction season or you're putting these things out to RFP late in the year when businesses may not be looking, there's not as much competition for bids and you're seeing either a drastically higher price or you're just seeing people not bid at all. So one of the things that is simple, it does not cost any money 
is that when we have an infrastructure program, put applications out in the spring, close it over the summer, have them reviewed, give an answer up or down to the municipalities in late fall. So you know if that project can go ahead and you can budget for that in your municipal budget for the following year. But also, which is just as key to your budgeting process is getting that RFP out in a time frame when there's businesses and contractors looking for work. That's when you get the most number of bids and that's when you get the best prices. This, again, does not cost anything, and it drives me crazy. And this has been a liberal, conservative, provincial, federal issue for a long time. I think these guarantees on timelines is a small thing that can save tens of millions of dollars in infrastructure and capital work every year just by simply acknowledging the seasonal calendar of the year and when shovels need to go in the ground. The last thing I'm going to mention on infrastructure is there's two programs that I know Megan, um, for an example, in recreation, I believe has applied to both of these and encourage you and anybody else in the local community that could take advantage of this. The Enabling Accessibility Fund for improvements for buildings, uh, wheelchair accessibility, whatever it may be, and the New Horizons for Seniors programs, uh, which cover a variety of capital and operating costs for seniors programming uh, in our area. So um, if you have any questions or you're applying for that, let our office know. We're happy to give letters of support and I am uh, do my best to work with the government on that side to, again, uh, to the first bullet point, get our fair share. So with that, I last slide, happy to take any questions or comments. Part of my presentation here is to give you an update on just a few of the issues that we're working on, but I'd like to hear any feedback, questions or comments that any of you may have on uh, these issues or other federal ones that you have. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, it's your turn to be on mute, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> uh, someone, Nancy did that on purpose. You need the cup. You have to hold it up. Uh, thank you for your presentation, MP Duncan. Uh, and uh, and seeing it a second time um, was good. Uh, there are things that I wanted to make comments on the first time, and and I appreciate given being given the uh, the PowerPoint in advance, and now I have it, and I don't have to try to remember exactly the good points that you touched upon. And I do want to touch upon some things uh, before I give you a chance to, uh, to to speak about other items. I'm sure you want to speak about this evening. Um, the support for 988, uh, that's in the package for tonight. We will get to that tonight. And uh, and uh, we're all well aware of the need for something uh, in this manner. Um, as for the, if, if it is a struggle, and I, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but if, uh, if Ms. Dingwall needs uh, more hours on a Monday, I, I think North Dundas can manage to offer that. Uh, we're open to, to that uh, if it's necessary. And uh, please don't, uh, and she could uh, extend the invitation to residents of South Dundas or from wherever to, to come to North Dundas for the high level of service offered in North Dundas. Noted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I want to speak to this support for mental health, and uh, this is something that uh, maybe in your in your role uh, you may have contacts, or you may be able to uh, to push this. Uh, and I'm sure you've uh, you're aware of the uh, the mental uh, the mental health the uh, the mental health nurse that travels with the OPP and SDG. Mm -hmm. um, it's I've, I've talked to different members of the uh, different officers with the OPP and uh, we were supportive of this initiative at SDG Council. It's been uh, reported back to us that it is, uh, it, it is successful. It returns officers to the uh, to their duties on the streets. It allows them to do the things they need to do, the things they're trained to do, and it allows the the uh, the mental health people to deal with the things they're trained to deal with. And it serves everyone, everyone, everyone. So, uh, so importantly, and it is an important initiative. I spoke about my frustration that to a lay person like me, it, it's so apparent that this is necessary. How can the provincial government not see the necessity in this? We're fortunate in SDNG that we're able to support, to fund an initiative like this, or to be a partner in supporting this. And I think of smaller communities that don't have the 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 facility, the finances to support this. And uh, we all live in this country. We're all you know we're all Canadians. We should have a, a similar level of, of service and care and concern for our mental health. And 
the hesitation by governments not to recognize the need for this uh, with the OPP, um, it, it's quite apparent and uh, it, it's, it's uh, not astonishing, but it needs to change. But I, I, do, uh, I do appreciate your talk about supporting mental health. I think I've made enough comments and I'll turn it over to other members for comments. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, and then Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, MP Duncan. Um, thank for your for your kind words. Actually, knowing how uh, social media forward I am, it was nice to read about my. Uh, it was nice to see somebody posted it, the picture <laughs> while I was still trying to figure out how to get it off of the machine. Onto the page. <laughs> Gotta be um, <laughs> you, or, or competent, which I'm neither. <laughs> um, I. I, I I will just sound like a broken record or, or a recording of Mayor Duncan or Mayor, geez, that doesn't take me back much, or <laughs> Mayor Fraser. Um, but uh, we wholeheartedly, uh, certainly the, the two of us agree with the with your initiative for, for the, uh, the suicide uh, three-digit line. Uh, again, as, as Mayor Fraser said, we, SDNG, we were, we were brought this initiative for the mental health professional to travel with the OPP. We, the only debate that we had, and it was just simply to get the principles out, was what Mayor Fraser is alluding to is that, it, um, and I still firmly believe it's not necessarily the counties that should be paying for it, but we, we so much agreed with the, with the necessity of it that we, we just, we, we, we got off of that principle and realized that it's, someone's got to pay for it and nobody else will, so we will. Subsequently, when we had the presentation from the OPP, Statistically, and, and, and you're excellent with statistics, among other things, uh, um, and Mr. MP, but it was proven by the OPP that it's actually cost neutral because what, they, what, they, what we spent, although we don't get the money back, what we spent for the, for the nurse was easily recouped with lack of overtime, lack of stress leave for the OPP uh, members, lack of, uh, of, of other time off for other reasons, lack of injury, all sorts, and lack of booking time, quite frankly, because people that would be where the OPP would have no recourse but to take them to jail and, and book them were treated properly, respectfully, and kindly by the medical professional. And many were just allowed to stay in their home after discussion and treatment that should be done by someone who's trained in that. So uh, I concur. I mean, some level of government besides the local one should be looking at the funding for this because it saves all Ontario taxpayers in our case money and so so it's it's an easy argument to make but we're not here to do that just just a, a, a another statement that i support your your thoughts on that as you know i sit on the joint liaison and shared services committee at the at the county level and the number one discussion point at every one of our meetings is affordable housing and the the biggest points are i mean a obviously everything comes down to money but also availability of properties if we were dropped a very large amount of money Finding properties and availability that are in the correct areas are not necessarily a slam dunk. It doesn't, even, it doesn't matter how big your purse is. It's just finding, and you're right, um, some buildings that get targeted are, are already purchased, but they've been vacant for years, you know. Uh, so that is frustrating for our level. And it's, it's, it's the biggest part of our package when, it's, when we have input from the public. We need affordable housing. We need affordable housing. And, and believe me, and you sat there, it's not like the people around that table don't want to provide affordable housing. It's just not that easy. So any initiative on that is fantastic. The last thing I will comment on is, is, is your appropriate point of, um, of talking about the infrastructure and needing reasonable timelines and needing even some, I understand your point on, on, on having firm timelines, but there's, there's also the possibility of making them realistic and allowing for, for extensions if, if necessary, because in today's market, for whatever reason, as we all know, even finding a tradesperson or a, or a larger company that wants to do some work or is available to do the work in a timeline that we're provided when money is granted, it's almost impossible. They're, most of the ones that are reputable and, and, and that, that you would know well and everybody around this table would know well, they're taking bookings for 2022, maybe 2023 for the, some of the more successful ones. So you announced today, not you, but you, you understand the governing body announces today, here's $50 million, North Dundas, go out and build yourself an arena, but you've got this sort of timeline. Even talking to the, large, the largest of, of ones that, that 
you know, Ellis Don, people that we would all know, they may say, yeah, we'll see you in 2023 to start. Mm-hmm. So they've got to recognize that now. And even if, even if Ellis Don was lined up, and I just use them for an example, if they were lined up and said, we could do it tomorrow, what's the guarantee they could get the product? And yet we would be held to a timeline that A, you're correctly pointing out, is is unrealistic to start with. And then we'd have finished times and requirements. It's just, it's it's almost insulting that that, that doesn't get recognized. So again, I wholeheartedly uh, uh, agree and support your initiatives and I'll allow the, I'll cede my time to allow other people to speak. Thank you, Thank you Deputy Mayor. Uh, comments from other members of council or questions for the MP, Councillor Thompson. Yeah, so I'd like to also just uh, thank MP Duncan for the presentation. Uh, lots of information and a lot of my points have been touched on by the mayor and the deputy uh, with the affordable housing and the uh, the need of it. And I know right now uh, with uh, market values, um, even a developer is looking uh, to acquire properties to uh, renovate or properties to build on uh, with the uh, with the costs. It, it does make it hard, but uh, there's a definite need, especially for uh, uh, younger couples or younger people starting out or for, uh, for seniors. Um, there's a definite need for the affordable housing. So it's something that, uh, that we should look into. And then just a comment uh, for the mental health, uh, for uh, trying to get more, uh, more input from the federal and uh, provincial, uh, the funding. Uh, we had the presentation that our council uh, had supported. I believe it was Officer uh, uh, Blanchett that did the uh, uh, presentation to us about the, uh, the OPP initiative, and it's been going very, very well. Uh, but the, for um, just for uh, support uh, for counseling uh, to get something into the uh, to all the more rural areas um, uh, financially to make it uh, to make it affordable. And uh, and on a timely manner to be able when the when the need is there, uh, it's something that's going to have to be looked at to uh, uh, to get it more more distributed uh, to round and make it make it more available for the need. Because I know with and we've all heard, especially with uh, with COVID and everything that's going on, the rise in uh, uh, suicide cases, uh, domestics. It's it's all. Uh, the numbers are all climbing with uh, the situation that people have been going through for the last so 18 months now, I guess, or uh, going on going on two years. But uh, no, thank you for the presentation. And there's uh, there'll be more that we'll have to uh, we'll have to get talking about uh, on some of these issues. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Annabel. Um, I'm on. Um, I'd, I'd just like to say thanks for your work to, to advancing the 988. Um, I have to go back seven or eight years ago myself when my wife passed. I watched two years as she passed. I was left with a 15-year-old to, die, uh, to, to raise. I was working 55, 60 hours a week. The only avenue that was open to me was hospice, and I'm not belittling hospice one iota. But now there are so many more avenues for help for people that need it. And and, um, just want to say thank you for your work on 988. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Annabelle. Uh, Councillor Hoy? Yeah, well, uh, that was a great presentation there, Eric. And uh, yeah, I think that moving forward with the 988 is definitely a good plan because if you asked me what the regular number was, I wouldn't have a clue. So that would definitely help uh, a lot of people that need help to have an easy number to remember to call and know that somebody's there. For sure. Thank you and, all. and thank you, Councillor Hoy. Uh, before I uh, let you jump back in, uh, Mr. MP, uh, the the we've all become better at even saying the words mental health. You know, uh, it's not taboo to talk about it. Uh, it's becoming less taboo. It's uh, it's 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 widely accepted. Uh, now that we've broached that brook, we need to. Uh, Everyone needs to bear down and find the finances and, and work towards the solution, not the solutions, but some of the support mechanisms that, are, that we can get in place. Um, we're not, 
we're, we're not shy to talk about the need of mental health. We're not shy to even say that. It's we, we just need the funding, the support, and and uh, the infrastructure put in place, be it uh, uh, intellectual infrastructure or buildings. We need something to, to support that, and uh, that's that's the next challenge in front of us. I I, I want to go back to the uh, if uh, if if I uh, if I may, and I guess I, I will. Um, affordable housing. Um, as a member of council, if you were uh, challenged by someone in, in the community about affordable housing, you really couldn't offer anything concrete. We could talk about potholes, we could talk about snow banks, we could talk about drainage, things that we could manage. But as the deputy mayor and others spoke about, it's, it's really, it's almost unmanageable for a local municipality to deal with it. But we're the, the we're the we're the first contact for people that are looking for affordable housing. And it's, it's a challenge. And I, and I look at the cost of development, the cost of bringing water, the cost of sewer, a development, that old mantra, development pays for development. Um, well, if development's gonna pay for development solely, if it's solely development paying for development and they have to bring in $50 million worth of infrastructure, uh, there won't be affordable housing. There has to be, mechanisms in place to ensure that uh, if a developer commits to to uh, providing affordable rental housing or rent the income housing there has to be mechanisms in place that will alleviate the pressure of the developer that wants to support low income housing from having to support all of the development which in turn in my mind raises raises the cost of housing which it makes it not uh, affordable. Um, that's my thoughts on that. And um, saying that, uh, I think I'll offer you an opportunity to offer congratulations. <laughs> Will do. Uh, so I thought uh, great comments all around and much appreciated. On, on the affordable housing, I agree that it's not a one size fits all or going to be an instant solution. And to Deputy Mayor Armstrong's point about uh, the idea that um, it's not going to be turnkey and instantaneous, even just from a development perspective as well. Uh, there are a few things I think I'm working right now at the city of Cornwall and been invited on their housing affordability task force to come up with some specific items. And I, I will give credit actually to our neighbors to the West North Grenville. If you hadn't had the chance yet, they had done an affordable housing task force themselves and had some pretty good tangible things that each level of government can do. Uh, obviously the more disconnected you get from the local municipality, uh, you know, the more difficult it is to get support for but for an example granny suites could be something where i know waiving development charges for or encouraging uh existing houses to be able to put an apartment rental in the basement or converting something along not that way that can help with supply and the waiving of that a couple of thousand dollars in a building permit or development fee depending on for granny suites and how that goes that could be something but i agree in the bigger picture when it comes to your six eight or 10 unit apartment buildings. Uh, we've got to have some bigger incentives there that catch the eye of developers uh, all across the country to do this. So, so certainly something there. The last point I'll just make is on mental health, um, that uh, the OPP program is a fantastic example. At the federal level, we transfer the dollars to province to run healthcare. And it's a very sensitive thing between provinces of mandating people or saying, uh, giving it with strings attached. However, uh, limiting that, I think one of the things we can do is making sure when we talk about frontline services, that OPP program is a perfect example of something that can go into the point of being cost neutral or effective from, um, from a wide variety of HR and operational costs for the OPP. Look no further than the Joint Services Manager Liaison Committee that the Deputy Mayor Armstrong's on is um, the community paramedicine program that has been made more permanent now through funding through that. The, it was a pilot started by the province, but somebody took the, um, you know, the baton and went with it. And they were actually able, because by doing those home visits, that was actually a savings because people who were regularly making calls to ambulance service, they were going and proactively checking on them. It lowered call volumes. It allowed them to focus on um, you know, the higher uh, seriousness of case levels and actually produced a savings over the course of time. So that's to me is just an example of where I think is a, and a good example of a frontline service we can fund on that. So um, we have the, you know, the degree of separation through funding, but I certainly think saying any dollar spent need to go not to a strat plan or not to a bureaucracy or uh, I, I think what it needs to be is frontline services that can go in to the OPP with an existing service 
and build and enhance on it right away and make a difference. So um, I appreciate the chat here. It's just like old times, albeit in a virtual manner. I know you guys likely have other things and your support on the 988 resolution tonight would be wonderful. So thanks for that and uh, keep up the great work you all. Thank you, MPP, MP. I'm sorry, this, it's just alliteration. Thank you, MP Duncan. I gotta slow down. No MP. You're talking like me. <laughs> Take care and have a good night. Thank you. Good to see you all. Take care. Thanks, Eric. Move by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, signed by Councillor Thompson. The council acknowledges the presentation provided by Eric Duncan, MP, Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry, this 22nd day of June 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Move by Councillor Annable, second by Councillor Hoy. The council proceed in camera at 7.33 p.m. Pursuant to Section 2392 of the Municipal Act 2001, C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. All those in favor? Carried.
Mayor Frazier, will you please recommence the meeting? Yes, I am certainly looking forward to the end of this. Um, Mayor Frazier? Yes. Please Mayor restart Frazier. the meeting. Welcome, uh, welcome back everyone to the regular meeting of the Council of the Township North Dundas, moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by Councilor Annabel, that council move to open session at 7.58 p.m. All those in favor, carried. Moved by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Hoy, that council authorized staff to proceed as directed on property matters as discussed in closed session. All those in favor? Carried. Action requests, CAO, Ms. Rutley. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. What you have in front of you tonight is our pandemic staff accommodation policy. It currently exists, has been in place uh, since last fall. We had the first one and the existing policy started in January. It is set to expire June 30th. Uh, the policy provides for five days of paid COVID related leave for any circumstances that the employee is unable to come to work, whether voluntary or involuntary. So if they're sick, if a family member sick, if they have to get tested, if they have to quarantine, um, because they've been exposed to a case. So the intention was to review this. We reviewed it at the end of 2020 and extended the policy uh, into 2021. So now we're reviewing it again to determine if it should be extended beyond June 30th. Currently, a lot of our employees have been able to attain their first shot of the vaccine, but not everyone has been able to uh, have an opportunity yet to be scheduled in to receive their second shot of the vaccine. So certainly, although cases are low in the area, there is still definitely risk involved. And one of the things uh, that this time allows people to do is to go and get their COVID vaccine too. Um, so I am recommending that we extend the policy to September 30th. All indications seem to be that most people should be able to have their second shot by September 30th. So I'm hopeful that we'll be in a very different place by then. Uh, I would like to clarify that this does not give a new five days. What this does is extends the effective date for the existing five days. So whatever number of days an employee has not used to date would still be available um, until September 30th. And I will also note that there's been very little use of this. We've been very fortunate in terms of exposures. Um, it has been used some, but it, it's certainly not something that uh, people are abusing and using uh, unnecessarily. So it's very appreciated. And we certainly have it in place to make sure that our employees are not coming into the workplace when they're sick, when they need to quarantine uh, so that they're protecting their coworkers. So I would ask council um, to consider extending the existing policy to the new deadline of September 30th. Thank you, Ms. Rutley. Questions, comments? Seeing none, moved by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Hoy, that Council approves policy number 88-2020, a COVID-19 staff accommodation policy, as amended to extend the effective date from June 30th to September 30th, 2021. All those in favour? Carried. Bylaws, Mr. Pohl. Thank you, Mayor Fraser. So the first bylaw this evening is the Country Lane uh, bylaw amendment that will rezone rural lands to the estate residential exception three uh, zone to allow the subdivision to be completed uh, the final phase of it. Thank you. Questions, comments? Seeing none, moved by Councillor Annabelle, seconded by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, the bylaw number 2021-43 being a bylaw to amend the former Township of Mountain zoning bylaw number 79-6 as amended, be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed this 22nd day of June, 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Mr. Pohl. 
The next bylaw before council is for 2 Mill Street in Moorwood. It's regarding an application to rezone a former institutional building to allow for a custom workshop uh, in the building. It currently is existing and they're looking to legalize it now for insurance purposes uh, and also the retail sale of garlic and drying garlic in the building. Thank you. Questions, comments? Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, seconded by Councillor Thompson, that bylaw number 2021-44 being a bylaw to amend the former Township of Winchester zoning bylaw number 12-93 as amended be read and passed in open council signed and sealed this 22nd day of June 2021. All those in favour? Carried. Mr. Pohl. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think it's no, I'm sorry. It's uh, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Thank you. Uh, the next bylaw presented this evening is bylaw 2021-45, being a bylaw to establish fees for certain licenses, permits, certificates, and various services. Um, a, a brief review of our, of our bylaw on file 2017-12 indicated that certain fees and charges were outdated and were captured in other bylaws. Uh, so we've taken a look at that and specifically the fee for water and sewer connection was included in the actual water sewer fixing rate bylaw, which was good. And we've also updated the fees for our fire inspection and fire order services uh, searches in this bylaw. So we would ask that you adopt the Schedule A of the bylaw, and we will be repealing bylaw 2017-12 as presented. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Questions, comments? Moved by Councillor Hoy, seconded by Councillor Annabel, that bylaw number 2021-45 being a bylaw to establish fees for certain licenses, permits, certificates, and various services be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed this 22nd day of June, 2021. All those in favor? Carried. We're going to move into key information. We have one uh, report and uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Frazier. Um, the key information report deals with a flag protocol policy. Uh, we currently do not have a uniform and consistent protocol for raising, displaying and flying uh, the flag at half mast. Um, our procedural bylaw does speak uh, to which flags may be flown, um, but um, we don't have any rules actually and regulations uh, for when the flag would be uh, lowered. So the attached policy deals with uh, outlines that protocol relating to the displaying flags and flying flags. Uh, so it would be to mark a period of mourning and or to commemorate special observances. Uh, but always with key information, uh, these are the comments that we have put together for you to review. If there's anything you wish to add to this policy, uh, we're happy to take, a, to take a look at it and uh, discuss it tonight. Uh, bear with me, Madam Clerk and fellow councillors. Um, I'm trying to see what we have presented to me. What I'm looking at in, oh my goodness. So uh, the information I have, um, do we have uh, anything, Madam Clerk, that addresses the pride flag? No, we don't at this time. So at this time, I'd like to... Uh, uh, Bring to council's attention that I, I would like to see an exception uh, to the uh, uh, item two um, flags representing private organizations, events, and causes shall not be displayed, and have an exception to uh, number two and make two two a and look at two uh, b. And the exception to two a is that the pride flag shall be flown at the municipal office during the month of June. And were there any, any other comments or, or thoughts from other members of council that they'd like to bring forward to this policy? Councillor Thompson. Yeah, I think that was, uh, we had brought that up uh, a few years ago, I believe, right? Uh, with a uh, request from flying at different. Myself, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of leaving the policy uh, the way it stands now and not opening up uh, anymore. Uh, it could bring more requests and they could they can be looked at uh, on each individual basis, but myself, I'm in favor of leaving uh, uh, the policy as is. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Other thoughts? Councillor Hoy. 
Yeah, no, I'm uh, in agreement with John. I'm in favor of leaving it the way it is because I think that just opens a can of worms to everybody asking to have their flag flown when it should just stand the way it is, is my opinion, and then recovered. Thank you, Councillor Hoy. Uh, further comments? Uh, Councillor Annabelle, you had your hand up. I would like to see the pride flag added myself. Thank you for your comment. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, just to, uh, I, I understand the sentiments from, from the uh, Councillor Hoy and Councillor Thompson, but just so you'd be aware, if we do not fly the, the, the pride flag and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to, but we will be the only township through SD and G who does not. Um, it's, it's, it's been spoken about by all of the other townships and they felt that uh, it is an exception and an inclusion. And uh, as with the, the, the stop lines and the other, the other indicators of, of pride month, which is, which is in, in effect now, um, that they were all going to recognize it. So I think that uh, we, this is not something that we want to stand out alone on. And uh, um, it, it has been recognized and it's been recognized across the country, actually. So I think that we should make the exception for Pride Month and and, uh, and, and be that as it may, whether there's a cavalcade of people coming in or not. Uh, everyone has a, a strong reason for why their policy is being changed to that, and, and I think we should follow the lead of the rest of SDNG. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And uh, uh, no, I um, the, just uh, to my fellow councillors, uh, uh, this is um, the, we are able to make decisions. So we're able to uh, weigh uh, people's uh, concerns and uh, and uh, decide yes or no. Uh, but uh, I. I we we had good reasons at the time when we made that decision to leave it to the uh, the, the national and the provincial flag. Um, and at this time uh, in society, uh, Budweiser beer cans display the pride covers pride colors. Uh, it's it's a universal thing, and uh, we uh, to uh, the deputy mayor, we may not be the only one in South. Uh, Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry, but we might be the only municipality far that reaches far and wide that doesn't sell, uh, uh, recognize the pride flag during the month of June. I think it's, uh, I don't want to say imperative, but I think it's absolutely necessary that we, we see that as uh, something that we should be doing. Um, but uh, seeing as uh, three councillors have that strong feeling, uh, I think there's something else we need to do. We need to also, uh, and I think the deputy mayor may have had uh, a hand in this, is looking at the, the wishes of the OPP or following their, uh, their practices. Deputy Mayor, if you could speak to that. Um, on the issue of the pride flag? No, the OPP. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maybe I mis misunderstood that. Yeah. Have some Nothing issues. on the question, to be honest. No, no. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so with reference to the uh, to the OPP question, um, we it, we included in our policy we have the the flags that are at 547 St. Lawrence Street, which is the property occupied the lower level by the OPP will be flown at half mast in conjunction with OPP regulations. Okay, well, that's in yep. there. And um, yep. yes, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, my only thought on that is if the OPP ever decide to move out of that, then we'll have to change the policy. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I, uh, I understand others concern, but I'd like to move ahead with the, uh, the pride flag and uh, the uh, 2B and uh, the addition of the extra information in number six. If we could see a resolution to that at our next meeting. That's fine, thank you. Thank you. I've got so many papers here, bear with me, I'm gonna get back to my agenda. The consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have a resolution. You're 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 well ahead of me, Madam Clerk. 
Moved by Deputy Mayor Armstrong, second by Councillor Thompson, that Council approves policy number 90-2021, a flag protocol policy as amended this 22nd day of June, 2021. All those in favor? Thank you very much, carried. Mr. Mayor, so just for clarification, we are that's passed to this evening? Yes, thank okay. you. I just, yeah, I didn't. Okay. Uh, well, that's I fine, thought, thank I you. thought with the confusion, we'd have to do another resolution. Okay. The consent agenda, anything from uh, department heads or staff before I read the consent agenda? And I don't have one, but I do have a request from Eric Duncan MP, a resolution for of support for the creation of a three digit 988 national suicide hotline. Uh, MP Duncan spoke about that and uh, we all spoke of our support. Uh, I'll read the resolution. Move by Councillor Annabel, second by Councillor Hoy, whereas the federal government has passed a motion to adopt 988, the national three digit suicide and crisis hotline. And whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has increased the demand for suicide prevention services by 200%, and whereas existing suicide prevention hotlines require the user to remember a, a 10 digit number and go through directories or be placed on hold. And whereas in 2022, the United States will have in place a national 988 crisis hotline. And whereas the Township of North Dundas Council recognizes that it is a significant an important initiative to ensure critical barriers are removed to those in crisis and seeking help. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Township of North Dundas Council endorses the 988 crisis line initiative and that staff be directed to forward a copy of this resolution to MP Eric Duncan to indicate our support. All those in favor? Carried. Boards and committees. Um, County Council, um, Deputy Mayor. Well, we just completed our uh, our meeting on Monday, uh, the most recent one. There, we obviously some some challenges at the County Council, and um, nothing really big came out of it. Actually, it's uh, it was pretty standard stuff. Um, there, other than the the election of the warden. Uh, there were a few things that I know that you want to speak to, Mr. Mayor. Um, it was a long meeting, quite involved. There were uh, there were things that came up that uh, that we hadn't been dealing with or, or hadn't had an opportunity to deal with because of timing and, and because of some things. Um, but uh, we're back on track now. We uh, we again there wasn't any the the. I mean, it, it seems awkward because it's me speaking of it and I happened to win the election, but that, that was that was the biggest issue that we had to deal with uh, as to what we were doing going forward. So it did take up quite a bit of the meeting um, and uh, and obviously we've come to a resolution. Uh, I will allow the, the time for the mayor because I know he wants to speak to some of the things that we spoke of on that meeting and, and he was he was the centerpiece of a lot of it. So I will, I will send it back to you, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, uh, and uh, and um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Mr. Warden, Deputy Mayor, uh, but uh, that was uh, that was an important important meeting. Uh, we all recognize uh, the upset that has been caused throughout SDG and the upset that has taken place at the County Council, and we needed to uh, to stay on track. We needed to have leadership at the head of the table and congratulations to you on your election again. Uh, but I did want to bring up um, some smaller items, but uh, they are important in Hallville with the, the new park and it was spoke about the, uh, the, uh, the funding for the new park and the commitment from the municipality of North Dundas or the township of North Dundas to uh, get that park going. Um, County staff have recognized the need to uh, extend the 50 kilometer an hour speed limit north past the entrance to the Wiley Creek subdivision and create a new 60 kilometer an hour transitional speed zone north of the newly expanded 50 kilometer an hour uh, zone. Um, I asked the question and uh, Mr. DeHaan, the director of transportation, uh, just for uh, a landmark. And uh, he got back to me that it will be um, 
the sign is moving about 200 meters. The 50 kilometer an hour sign is moving about 200 meters north of the existing sign. And that just puts it south of the new road into the subdivision. And the 60 kilometer an hour zone is then extended 250 meters past that. And it will be past the fire uh, station entrance to the approximate limit of the settlement boundary area. So uh, there will be a change. Um, it, it has long been considered uh, by many residents that it's been uh, people coming uh, from the north to the south into Hallville have been traveling at a, a rate of speed to uh, inappropriate for the area. And uh, with this, uh, we hope to temper that and reduce the speeds as they get closer to the uh, substation and to the residential area and especially the park. So that that really uh, was uh, what I wanted to touch base on and just get that out there to the residents of Hallville that with the, the new park uh, in the future, the, the counties have already uh, considered uh, making sure that speed limit is appropriate for the area. Just if I may piggyback onto that, Mr. Mayor, just to remind the residents and to, to all council members and everything, there was also a good discussion about the level of enforcement because that's not the only road that they're throughout SDNG that there's going to be changes and uh, we will be uh, we will be commissioning the, the OPP throughout SDNG where there are uh, speed limit changes to be uh, enhancing their enforcement uh, of it uh, at the change period so people do get the message um, rather quickly and and uh, succinctly so uh, for those of, that are traveling that area just be aware that it won't just be a sign going up there will be uh, enhanced enforcement for, uh, for for the opening period for certain yes thank you for bringing that up um and as we spoke earlier, uh, the, the resolution before this, uh, it's been decided at County Council that the pride flag will be flown at the SDG County office. Uh, and I think that covers the, the items I needed to cover. And I'm gonna move on to Art in the Waterfront, Councillor Thompson, any update? Uh, the, only, the only thing I have right now is uh, the uh, uh, Michael Houston uh, tech uh, he's a member and he's uh, the art and the waterfront is looking at uh, partnering with the uh, uh, Chester Road District Agricultural Society on doing uh, doing a social event with um, but he's got he sent out an email different uh, there's still a lot of uh, uh, items that have to be finalized he's been in contact or is getting in contact with Brandon on uh, some items and then with the uh, fair board also for use of the lands, he wants to talk to the township about uh, uh, bathroom facilities, whether it's arena, whether it's uh, the fairground or the fair boards uh, facilities. But I'll, I'll bring up once we get more, there's still a lot of information that's being looked into. So once, uh, once we get some more answers on that, if there's questions to, uh, uh, to come to council about it, uh, I'll get the information back and uh, it will be presented. Well, that's uh, that's good to hear, Councillor Thompson, and it's good to hear that there's an initiative going on in, in Cheshville uh, to uh, to provide some uh, an outlet of good entertainment. Uh, I'm just going to go right to you again on the, the Historical Society. Any update? Uh, not nothing at this time. No. And the carnival. No. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the candidate, I can speak to that. Um, I had spoke to a member of the, the candidate uh, celebration committee from uh, South Mountain recently. And uh, at the time there was nothing planned. And with this meeting and the, the closest of candidate, our clerk reached out to that same person to see if there's any update. And uh, at, at this point, there will be no celebration at the South Mountain Fairground, at the Mountain Township Ag Society Fairgrounds. Uh, there will be no fireworks. And, uh, and it's strictly out of concern for people's uh, safety during this pandemic. Uh, so uh, uh, to the residents of North Dundas, um, I guess in advance, I can wish them a happy and safe Canada Day. Uh, but unfortunately, there will be no celebrations going on uh, hosted by um, the township or in conjunction with the township. And if you do endeavor to celebrate, please celebrate safely. Be mindful of your neighbors and have a good time. Dairy Fest, Councillor Hoy. Uh, no update at this time. 
and I have nothing further about display of lights. Uh, I haven't been made aware of an upcoming meeting, but I do anticipate one soon. The Fire Chief Steering Committee, uh, the man of many titles, Fire Commissioner Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We are um, we are hopeful. We we do need a meeting, but we haven't had one yet. It's uh, it's been a, a difficult time with schedules, but we're hopeful that we can do an in-person meeting, given the number that we have and the size of a couple of our buildings. In the very near future, we are just working on scheduling dates, making sure that we are within compliance if we do meet in in uh, person. But um, and I'll be checking with CAO Rutley and and the Eastern Ontario <clears throat> Health Center, But I think that uh, we are at the spot where nine people can meet in a, in a suitable sized building, but we're just making certain that it goes in the direction that it's supposed to go for the second portion of the opening. And, but we have been in contact a lot, but there's, a, there's not been a formal meeting. Thank you. Uh, and Winchester downtown revitalization, Councillor Hannibal. At the last meeting, I had said that there was a problem with flags. There wasn't a pocket to fasten them to the hardware. Uh, a day or two after J uh, June 9th's meeting, the flags came in, corrected. Uh, Owen and Vince and I put them on the hardware and uh, Township saw that they got erected on the poles the middle of last week, so everything is up. And uh, it looks excellent. Thank you. Um, motions, notices of motions, petitions, Council comments and concerns. Uh, I guess I just keep on, keeping on. Um, it's been brought to my attention that the what we commonly call Gypsy Lane, which, and I'm speaking to this section that runs to the east from uh, St. Lawrence Street, uh, truly is uh, unnamed. And uh, so uh, before a business gets situated there or other businesses get situated there, I think we need to establish a name for that. Uh, but I'm going to lean on Councillor Annable uh, for some historical information uh, to the, to the, uh, the name Gypsy. Or what um, he believes, what he believes. I don't want to say it's, it's absolutely I'm, true. I'm, I'm going what came from my parents. I'm, came, I'm going on what came from my grandparents. When my parents moved to Fred Street in 1962, uh, Ron and I used to go up Fred Christie's Lane, up to Gypsy Lane, and you could see areas in the bush up there where there had been camps and there was uh, the old pots and pans and uh, we came home told my dad and he gave me that history of that and and i remember my own grandparents talking about it in those days um uh, people who didn't have much were very transient uh the train had a station out at the tracks and and the train stopped and people who moved from town to town sneaking a ride on the train they would stay over in those camps there were certain people in town that if you went to their back door they fed them and and that's where they stayed over until they caught the train again and moved on to wherever uh, well thank you for that update and uh, I, I do have some concern uh, I don't want to if we go down this path of uh, naming something I don't want to misstep and uh, and offend someone and, uh, and not be aware of uh, or at least attempt to be aware of how the name came to be so uh, we'll be looking forward to establishing a name uh, to that I think there's some names that come quickly to mind for some of us uh, and uh, we'll generate a list and we'll have a further discussion about that at a, at a future meeting. Um, speaking of future meetings, our next meeting in August is August 17th. We had a request to have a change of date. Uh, the start time will be 7 p.m. on August 17th. Uh, that, I'm sorry, it's not our next meeting. Our meeting in August will be August 17th as opposed to uh, what it was originally scheduled of August 10th, start time 7 p.m. Um, Public swimming, um, public swimming being available this weekend and pre-registration is required online at the, uh, by going to the township website or by calling the township. Um, I think that's something that we need to get out there. Uh, last year, we didn't have any public swimming. I think this is a good, a good move on our part and I appreciate the efforts that staff have made to ensure that we can do this. Um, but uh, I'm glad to say that 
public swimming will be available this weekend. Contact the township. And I'm, I'm going to uh, ask, uh, if I may, uh, our CAO, is there further information required or that you'd like to announce concerning that public swimming besides contacting the township? Um, not at this point. We do have a limit of 15 people in the pool at any time. So we have hourly time slots, which means you have 45 minutes to swim and then there's 15 minutes between each uh, swimming period so that we can sanitize and clean. Um, registration online is very quick and easy. The pools were open last weekend and we had swimmers at both of the pools. It's, we only have one pool open each day due to the shortage in lifeguards. So please make sure that you're checking the schedule when you're registering to make sure which pool you're going to. There is only one pool open each day because of our shortage of lifeguards. Um, but we had a lot of happy people swimming in the pools last weekend. So that's wonderful. And we have also open swimming registration or swimming lesson registration. So that opened last weekend and there've been a lot of people registering for the uh, group swimming lessons. And we are also offering private swimming lessons again this year. So both are available, both are open. You can find information online or certainly by calling the township office and we'd be happy to help you. Well, thank you for the clarification and update on that, uh, Madam CEO. That's important. And uh, again, uh, um, it's, it's, it's fantastic news. Uh, other council members with comments, concerns? I don't want to eat it all up. I, I'd like to uh, extend congratulations to some people uh, that aren't township staff, but uh, do uh, work within our township, work at North Dundas, work at the Winchester District Memorial Hospital. Uh, throughout the year, the Winchester District Memorial Hospital presents an award to employees that are always willing to jump in. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Etienne Hache and registered nurse Brittany Coleman for being the most recent WDMH Commitment Award winner. Uh, their enthusiasm, dedication, positive attitude, and commitment to serve us all so well uh, is appreciated. We are so fortunate to have healthcare workers uh, that, uh, that look after us. And uh, from, uh, from me, and uh, I'd like to say from our council, uh, congratulations on your award. Uh, I'm going to move on to miscellaneous unfinished business. None. Ratification bylaw moved by Councillor Hoy, second by Councillor Thompson. That bylaw number 2021 46 to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be read and passed in open council, signed and sealed this 22nd day of June 2021. All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Annabel, that council adjourn at 8.30 p.m. to the call of the chair. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you everyone for participating. Good night and enjoy the game. Yeah, have a good night everyone.